why is it important? I can only really think of two reasons. One is if I'm managing a soil and I'm, I'm having difficulty with the turf, or I'm having difficulty with some nutritional deficiencies, and I recognize that the soil has a very low CEC. What is a low CEC? I would say two or three, something like that, four or five, something less than four or five, something around those, that, those numbers. When you have CECs less than that, it can give me a little bit of an indication of how to provide recommendations to that particular turf manager. So I might recommend in cases where nutrients tend to be deficient in those soils, I might recommend a little lower rate of application of those nutrients, but apply them more frequently to provide a little bit more uh, chance of having those nutrients uh, being taken up by the plant because I know there's a pretty good chance that they're not going to be retained in the soil. And the other reason is to refute base cattle and saturation BS artists. One of the worst books ever printed in soil science is this book called The Art of Balancing Soils and Nutrients. But in the preface to this book, it states, using the standard soil test like Malik or Moni Mastate, balance can be achieved nicely by using base cation saturation on soils with total exchange capacities greater than 10. So we let's just start there and make sure that you know that even above 10 it's useless. But even the base cation saturation nonsense artists say, well, it's not really useful below 10. So in my world, Whenever I'm talking to someone, the base kind of saturation is saying, well, I need to keep the bases here, bases there, or, and the calcium saturation should be 65, and their CEC is less than 10, I just pull out their own, their own BS book and I say, well, even the BS artists say you can't use it on soils less than 10. So that's the only two good reasons I can come up with to even re be concerned about CEC. 